In today's video, we're going to be looking at all the new updates in Adobe Lightroom Classic. So if you haven't already done so, and you're not aware, where have you been? Because Adobe have made a massive update. The first thing you want to do is obviously go to your Creative Cloud and update any of your Adobe products that need updating. So you can come up to apps here and then you can come over to the side here and you'll see where it says view updates and you can update here. So once you've done that on Lightroom Classic, it'll be version 13.3 and you'll be good to go. Now, as soon as you've done that, as soon as you've updated, what will happen is, is that Lightroom will ask you to upgrade your catalog. And that's just due to the sync engine that's within Adobe. So you'll need to do that. Nothing will happen. You'll just select yes and okay, and everything will be taken care of for you. So the main benefits from the updates is performance. The performance on Lightroom now has improved greatly. It's a lot quicker. There's a few bug fixes. It's just running a lot smoother. So if, you, if you've been having trouble with Lightroom over the last month or so, all of that touch wood should be solved and you should be good to go. So the first thing then is if we scroll down, you can see we have got the noise reduction. So the noise reduction now will be a lot quicker. Previous versions, it was a little bit slower but this has now been sped up and it is working really, really, really fast. So you can jump onto that and use that and you should have no problems now. It should be quick and easy and a lot faster to use. The other thing that has been introduced in the new update is tethering for Sony cameras. So if you are a Sony shooter, in previous versions, you've not been able to use the tether capture option that is now being taken care of. They can now join forces with Sony and everything is working. So if you want to use that feature, just come up to file and then come to tether capture, start tethering. And you'll also see the new interface is a little bit, little bit more slicker and it's a lot more responsive as well. And you do have live view so you can see what you're doing on your screen, which is great if you're doing product work because you can see everything all on screen and you can take your pictures. So that's another update. The other update that's come through is if you do edit video using Lightroom, then you have a tone curve option there now as well. So you can use a tone curve while editing video. But the main thing that we've all been waiting for is the generative AI remove tool. So this is now early access within Adobe Lightroom. So if you come up to the top here, you can see if you hover over that you've got the remove tool, if you click on that, You've got the normal tools, which have been in all the previous Lightrooms. And these are the same. So you've got the clone tool and you've got the spot healing. But if you come over to this one here, you can see that you've got these options here. So generative AI. Now you can use this without that. You can come over and do what you need to do. But you can see here, it says early access. So this is an early access, meaning it's not the finished product, but it works really, really well. So you'll need to click on Generative AI. And once you click that, you should get a prompt that come up and basically just says, this is early access. And you just say okay to that. Now you can also provide feedback here, which is really, really good if you can, because it just speeds up the process of Adobe learning curve and they can bring and roll this out a lot quicker if we, if we help them basically. So what we have then is the options here of the size of the brush. Okay, you can always use the brackets keys. You've got the opacity as well. And we also have object aware. So if I don't select the object aware, so I'm gonna use the bracket keys just to make my brush smaller. So if I don't use the object aware and I just paint over, you can see what's gonna happen. It's gonna select the whole area there. So I'm gonna cancel that and select object aware. And now if I just go around this particular object, what it's going to do is hone in onto that. And you can see there, there's actually selected the whole of the object, which is brilliant. You'll have either the option to add or subtract from that mask. So if we add, we can then come in and continue our selection. So you can see there, 
that will just tidy that up and get rid of that shadow. Now, if I want to do something else as well, I can. I can add another selection. So let's come up to here and add another selection. Now, what's going to happen there is that we are going to have two separate selections. So these aren't going to be linked. They are going to be separate selections, meaning that we can change them individually. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So if I come over to here and just I click apply, what's going to happen is that it's going to go up to the Adobe Cloud and it's going to do all the generative removal. So it takes a little bit longer because it's not done and processed on your computer. Um, it's the same within Photoshop at the minute. It's the same thing. I'm sure this will be changed very soon in the next update. Okay, so what we now have on here is the variations. So you can see we've got number one and number two up there. So if I just come over to number two and then click variations, you'll be able to see that we can change the variation. So if I just zoom in up here, you can see there the variations. And if you're not happy with that, you can click refresh. But it's only going to refresh this. It's not going to refresh the other selection, which is brilliant. So it just gives us a lot more control. And you can see there, we can just change. So once we're happy with that, we can say, right, that's fine. We're, we're happy with that particular one. Let's come over to this one, just select it. And again, we can make changes. So let's say I'm happy with that. We can just press the enter key and that'll get rid of everything. And that will give us our finished article. And you can see there that it's brilliant. It's really, really good. And it's gonna help so, so much with your editing because it means you don't have to jump in and out of Photoshop to use tools like the Spot Healing Brush Tool and things like that. So that is the biggest update that's come through. We've been waiting a long, long time for this. So I'm really, really happy that they've done that. The other thing that you'll see as well, if we scroll down, is that the lens blur is now fully functional. It's not early access. So this has been improved. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot more responsive. So if I just click apply, if you've not used this before, I'll walk you through it just to show you. This enables you to change depth of field and the blur amount. So if we look on here, we can visualize depth. So if we select that, then it comes up with different colors and we can then change our depth. Now, if you hold the Alt or Option key down, you can see that it changes into white. So white is gonna be areas that are gonna be within focus. As I hold that Alt or Option key down, it comes up here with the focus range. It's letting me reset that. So if I wanted to add a little bit more blur, then I could. So if we take the visual depth off, we can still use this function, as you can see there, without the visual depth. So if we wanted to just add a little bit more blur to say this foreground and the background, we can do that. So we've got the brush refinement here. So if I wanted to add a little bit of blur, I can. So I've got the amount Got the size of the brush, the feather, and the flow. And we've also got auto mask as well. I'm going to just tick that off. And I'm just using brackets keys to make the brush bigger and smaller. And we can just paint in areas that we want to be out of focus. So this is going to give you a little bit more creative freedom. And you'll see here that I'm literally just going over and it is so quick and so responsive. Previous to this, it was a lot slower and we had to wait. It would just take its time and it would just be a bit of a um, bit of a nightmare just waiting for it to catch up. But this now is working really, really well and really, really quick. So I'm happy with this update. So you can see here what this is going to do. It's just going to enable us to select areas. You can use this as sparingly or as much as you want. You've also got the boost option there and you can also increase the blur amount. And you'll see that once I've made that selection, I can 
go back and I can control it. So it's non-destructive, meaning that once we've made that adjustment, we still have some control. We wouldn't want it to be fully 100%, so we can just drop this down a little bit. And if we want to bring anything back, we can click on focus and we can just start painting areas that we want to come back into focus. So it's really, really handy. And like I said, the main thing is the response time is so quick and so sharp. I'm really, really impressed with it. So as you can see here, that would then make a nice adjustment there. We've just got a nice shallow depth of field and we've just got the guy there working away in the background. There are a few best practices that Adobe recommend. So the first is to use this prior to cropping. So if you're gonna crop your picture, use this first. The next is use prior to mask or lens blur. And the reason why is to prevent ghosting effects. So what they, what they mean by that is, is that if you're going to use the generative AI, then you need to do that before you do any lens blur. Okay, so I hope that makes sense because otherwise you can create these really weird effects and uh, you, you'll wonder what's going on with your images. The, uh, the next thing is that they're saying that when you're making a selection, then you want to include the shadows, you want to include everything, but also be generous with it because it's not like the pen tool in Photoshop. You can just make a big selection like this and it will do a really good job at selecting, as you can see there. Now I didn't have object aware on, but if I just click apply, it will still do a good job. So you don't have to worry about getting perfect selections, okay? But if you are selecting, say people, and you wanna preserve background, then you wanna use the object aware when you're making your selection, okay? So I've just done what Adobe have said not to do and use it after I've used the lens blur, but actually it's okay. But for best practices, do this first, then, you, then use lens blur, okay? The other couple of updates that we've got at the minute is within the presets module. So if we come down to the actual Adobe presets, what you'll see is that they've introduced a few new adaptive presets, which are really, really interesting actually. And I think they're gonna save a lot of time. And you can see they're here, look. So we've got the adaptive sky, we've got the adaptive subject, but if you look here, we've got the adaptive blur background. So let me just reset this and show you what this is. So you've got basically levels of strength, subtle, strong, then you've got circle, bubble, geometric, ring, swirl, and they're to do with the bokeh. So if we come up to here and say strong, it's going to adapt and do its best job. And it's not done a bad job there. And we can change the bokeh on there. On this, it's not very visual because there isn't any backlight on there. But you can see that the difference between subtle, strong, and circle. And then you can reset the blur as well. So this is a really, really good tool to use if you just want a quick adjustment. And don't forget that at the top here, you do have the amount. So you can increase that. So you've still got some further control over that. So it works really, really well. So they are the new updates. I hope that's just walked through some of the basics for you, but have a play. This is really, really interesting and I'm really excited about the development of this. Remember, this is still early access. So they, it's not the finished product. It will get better over time. So use it, enjoy it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.